by now you should you should have some ideas on when you want to solve problem like statically determinant structures like this so what are the things that you should if you are asked to find reaction forces so what are the things that you should do for example these structures that is also one of the problem that we have look at and also one of the problem that you have in your tutorial questions so a frame example with loadings linearly distributed uniformly distributed so <clears throat> by now the process that you have to go through will be first you get the statical determinacy pay attention if there is any hinges or not in between members any internal hinges if there is no then no need to separate if there are hinges then you have to separate the structures or make use of the hinge so this is easily statically determinate remember the spelling statically determinate not statically determinacy not statical determinate but statically determinate please uh, use the term correctly and after you show this you have to make conclusion therefore it is statically determinate do not stop here what is the meaning of this you have to make a conclusion when you are doing the checking next you want to find reaction forces so use equilibrium equations so which one to use use the one which will solve as far as possible directly one of the reaction forces for this one if you take moment at this point you get directly by so you take summation of moment at a you get by directly so choose any equilibrium equation the sequence that you use is not important but it will save time in terms of how many times you have to spend to try to get all the three reaction forces so you take moment at this point a you get directly by and then please remember how to take care of loading like this how to take care of the moment of loading like this and loading like this and remember you have to pay attention to where you take the moment okay. so if you solve once you solve for by please indicate the directions and the direction correctly if you assume positive then you get if you assume upwards you get answer positive means your direction is correct if not your direction that you assume is wrong it should be opposite after this first equilibrium equation then you can get make use of the other two to find this and this so you can make use of this to find this which is all the forces in horizontal directions again please pay attention how to take care of loading like this it is for force equilibrium this is equal to the area of this triangle half 2.5 18 and your assumption ax is from left to right but you get negative means your correct direction should be from right to left so i have to indicate when you indicate these directions no need to put the negative anymore because this directions is correct directions the negative means your assumption is wrong so final one ay so you take ay the final equilibrium equation the third one so this one does not affect this this has no direction in vertical direction only this one so this is uniformly distributed so this load is 12 plus 6 which is 18 multiplied 1.5 the area of this triangle area of this rectangle gives you the total load and you get ay positive meaning your assumption is correct so that is the basic steps that we will go through there's a matter which what type of structures we have beam frames or arch we are going to look at one arch if it is a curved member the process is the same so you can do some checking you can do some checking to confirm your answer whether it is correct take moment at b then you should get this one answer should be equal to 0 or very close to 0 0.01 0.02 it sometimes you cannot get exactly 0 because of the decimal places in this case because all the values are 
very good number, so you get zero. So this is for checking. This is not necessary to be shown in the solution process. But if you are asked to do checking, then you have to do. But if you are not asked, this is not necessary steps. But just include here to show you if the answers are correct. If you take moment at any point here, you should get moment at that point equal to zero, uh, approximately equal to zero. So if you, we can also get, we have seen example which is a beam and frame which are all straight line. Now we can also solve problem which is curved as long as they are statically determinate. This is one of the topics that will be covered three pin arts. Just briefly go through how do you apply the principle of equilibrium to solve this. This is three pin arch. This is pin support, pin support and a hinge joint here. And you have a loading uniformly distributed acting vertical acting in horizontal directions, one kilonewton per meter. You have a uniformly distributed load acting vertically, 2.5 kilonewton per meter. This is 30 meter, to all together is 60 meter, and this one is, the radius is 30 meter. So this can be an analysis model for a bridge. This can be an analysis model for a bridge structures in the form of arch. So, this is a problem with hinge joint. So, to check statical determinacy, first step, you have to make use of the hinge. There is a hinge joint here. So, to check statical determinacy, so we draw the free body diagram. This is pin, pin. So, free body diagram, you have two supports. Two supports. This is an X, this is a Y. So C X T Y A X A Y one two three four four reaction force check statical determinacy. There is a hinge here, so you have to divide. Okay, cut the structure here, and then there is a hinge. Two react two forces here at the hinge. B X B Y. If this is B X, this also B X. This also. If this is B Y, this is also B Y. But remember, directions they are all opposite. So this is the same as this, direction opposite. This is the same magnitude, the same direction opposite. So how many reaction, how many unknown forces? One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many equilibrium equation? Three for this part, three for this part. So you have six. So statically determinate structures. So three pin arch is statically determinate structures. And this is one of the topics that you have that will be covered by Dr. Taxia. This is a statically determinate structures. So to solve this and this, this is, you have to use equilibrium equations. Plus, you definitely have to use the condition of this hinge here. So again, which one we want to use, we have to choose the one as far as we can. If you use that equilibrium equations, you solve directly the reaction forces. So which one do we start? We look for the one that will give us directly the answer of one of these reaction forces. So one, two, three, four. This A and C, they are staying on the same level. They are staying on the same level. I'll show you, these are the same level. Okay? I mean the height, they are the same. So if you take moment at C, for example, if you take moment at C, then this one don't have to consider, this one don't have to consider. This AX, A and C at the same level, no need to consider AX. So the only reaction forces that will cause moment at C is AY. So you have negative AY60, here I consider counterclockwise as positive. So AY is clockwise at C. Next, this one, this comes from here. 1 times 30 is the height here, is the total force multiplied with perpendicular distance to C, which is 30 divided by 215. And this is clockwise moment, so negative. And this one, 2.5 
Okay, vertically, multiply with 60, give you the total load. Multiply with 30, which is 60 divided by 2, so perpendicular distance of this to point C. And this cause counterclockwise moment, so it becomes positive. So finally, we get AY positive, meaning that the assumption here is correct, the directions. Okay. So this is where you get this from. Okay. This is coming from this part, and this is coming from this part. Okay. To draw this curve, it takes me uh, one hour. This one is highly sophisticated curve. This one takes only one minute finish because it is not very nice curve. This is all curvature is have to be maintained. So this one, if you want to know how to draw this curve, I can teach you how to draw this. This is freehand, freehand. No need to use. Microsoft words, no need to use anything, just draw directly using your pen, you can get this. You can also draw this and this accidentally, there's some ink here. Right. So, this is how we get vertical reaction force AY. And pay attention to how you get, consider moment because of this, moment because of this, at C. Next one, you have, once you already solved for AY, now you want to solve for the other three. AY is solved, so AX, CY, and CX, the other three you need to solve. So how do you solve this? So you choose another one. Now you make use of the hinge. It makes use of the hinge. Why we choose this? Because if you make use of this free body diagram, you take moment at B here, this is a hinge, so moment zero. Then you can solve for AX, because BX, BY don't have to consider. If you take moment at B, AY already calculated. So you can get AX directly. So take moment at B, using only, this is the symbol here, superscript, using part of the structures, A, B only. So finally we get the equilibrium equations I consider counterclockwise uh, counterclockwise positive. So AX, this AX is counterclockwise at B multiplied with 30 minus 67.5. This come from this. This is clockwise. And this one comes from here minus uh, multiplied 15. This is counterclockwise. And this one comes from this 2.5 plus multiplied 30 multiplied 30 over 2, 15 then you get AX positive, which means your assumption is correct. Okay. So, <coughs> whenever you have a hinge, in, internal hinge, definitely one of the equilibrium equations that you use is coming from the hinge, because without that you cannot solve this. Yeah. So now we have made use of this condition of the hinge here. So I let you enjoy again the beautiful curve, this one coming up here. This coming from here, and this one coming from here. Because this is an arch problem, so we have to use also some arrow which is curved. So this is, if it is a beam problem, frame problem, we use arrow which is straight. This is arch. Okay. Thank you very much. This is early in the morning. Everybody is not, <coughs> not very cooperative in laughing. So, you have solved this, now remaining these two. So which one to use? Next, only two left. You have already solved for AX, AY. Then you want to solve CX, you want to solve for CY. So the next one, if you take this equilibrium equation, so where you, can, you can get CX, so 15 is this one, AX, this one comes from here. This one comes from here, so you get CX negative. Negative means CX should be acting from the left, from right to the left, not like this. The direction, the correct direction is it should be acting in this direction. So you get negative and indicate the final answer, the magnitude and the direction correctly. 
Okay, so this is coming from here. This is distributed load. This is also uniformly distributed load. Only this is acting horizontally, this is acting vertically. Finally, this one solved, this one solved, this one solved. This is the final one. Make use of equilibrium equation in y directions. So you get this. 67.5 is here. This one is horizontal, so no need to be considered. And this one, 2.5. Multiply with 60, the area of this rectangle. This is coming down, we assume going up as positive and plus Cy, so you get Cy positive. Okay. So, these are the steps involved, even though this problem is an arch where the members are curved. So, you can also, as long as statically determinant, you can solve this problem. So for checking, you can do some checking, take moment at any other points, at any point, just take moment at B, at the hinge joint. You take moment at A, take moment at B, take moment at C, you take moment at any point that you choose, you, get, you should get zero or very close to zero. Because for equilibrium, moment at any point should be zero. So, in this particular example, just you have to refresh yourself, make sure you understand how to consider distributed load which is acting horizontally or acting vertically. Okay, they are the same. You have to find the equivalent, yeah? you have to find the equivalent force, which is the area of this. And you have to find the, if you want to take moment, you have to multiply with that force with the perpendicular distance. So even though it is curved, you can also solve this. Okay? And under the topic three pin arch, you will come across Arch structures again, how do you calculate bending moment shear force in arch? But you can make use of what we have covered here to determine the, uh, the reaction force. Is there any questions on, on arch structures before I proceed? No questions? Thank you. Now, we want to go through one example. So far, all the examples that we have solved, you don't have, you can get the answer directly. The next problem that you are going to, we are going to discuss, you cannot find, you cannot solve the reaction forces directly. You have to solve simultaneous equations. But you can, it is still statically determined structure. So we look at this problem where hinges, this is a, problem, 3 span. Span is uh, the distance between one support to the other in, the, in this beam here. So this one span, two span, three span. With two internal hinges. You have two internal hinges. Previously, we saw example, two internal hinges. I call it case one. One hinge here, one hinge here in different span. Now we have two hinges in the same span one here and one there. This again can be an analysis model representing a bridge structures. A bridge structures sometimes because of construction problem, construction considerations, we put a hinge here. Okay. So this can be analysis model for the bridge structures and now we want to analyze this to find the reaction forces. Basically this is the same thing as what we have discussed in many other problems. But I want to include here to show to you that in this case, you have to, you cannot solve any of the reaction forces directly by just using a one equilibrium equation. You have to solve two equations simultaneously. Okay. To check for statical determinacy, these are pin, roller, 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 so all together you are going to have 
five reaction forces. But you have hinges, so you have to consider the hinges. So you separate here, then you are going to get the hinge, uh, the free body diagram. So you have this statical determinacy, so you have this, you have to separate at the hinge here, separate at the hinge there, so one, two, three, it become three structures. So at the hinges there, remember you have two forces, so Cx, this is C, we call it C, this is called it D, so Cx, Cx, Cy, Cy, Dx, Dx, Dy, Dy, remember they are the same magnitude direction opposite. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This, this they are the same, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 unknown forces when you separate them into three parts. So unknown forces is 9 equilibrium equation 3, 3, 3. So 3 times 3, you get 9. So 9 equal to 9. So this is statically determinate. So you can solve this. So remember at the hinge, you have to divide this. So the next thing is you have to solve for Ax, Ay. You won't, we only want to know reaction forces, not this and not this. So we only want to know the red one, Ax, Ay, By, Ey, and F, Y. Okay. So let's see how we do it. So summation of forces, uh, this horizontally, there is no horizontal component. Directly, Ax is equal to zero. So this one you have to solve. You have to show. Okay, because Ax in this case is equal to zero. Ax in other case might not be equal to zero. So this, although it is equal to zero, you have to show them because of there is no other loading. So Ax becomes zero. So you have this summation of moment at C. So we make use of the first hinge. You cut here. Look at this part. You cut here. So this is a free body diagram. Ax. A Y B Y A X already becoming zero, so you have A Y and B Y. So take moment at C. Remember, you want to find A Y and B Y. You do not want to find. You you are not asked to find C Y and C X. So take moment at C. Don't take moment at B. Take moment at B. You have to use this. You have to solve for C Y. Take moment at C. Then. We use only this part AC only. That's why there is a superscript here. We do not use the whole structures. I use only one part, which is at the hinge there. So I indicate here AC equal to zero. So counterclockwise positive. So this is clockwise. Negative AY multiply 60. 355, 37.5. This is 355. 355 is this load, multiply this plus this is 37.5, this is clockwise, this is clockwise moment and then by, this is counterclockwise, and this is counterclockwise moment, that's why we get positive, and by multiplied with this, clockwise moment, that's why negative, so solve this. We cannot solve this directly because you have Ay and By. You have Ay and By at the same time in the equations. You cannot solve this directly. Okay, in this case, this is a case where we cannot choose one equilibrium equation that you can solve immediately. You cannot solve it immediately. Okay. okay. This Ay to this. 355 is this, by is this. So you get this one equation. There are two unknowns. So you have to find another equation, another equilibrium equation that gives you another equation with ay and by. You cannot solve this directly yet, but you have the first equation. So the next one is, you make use of this hinge here. You cut here again. You cut here until here. So AD, 
A to D, so you have a hinge here, this is a free body diagram. Then you have AY and BY in the equations again. So take moment at point D only using part A to D. So again counterclockwise as positive. So negative AY, this one is clockwise. This one counterclockwise. This, this multiplied with this. Minus BY, this is clockwise. Plus this one. 44 multiplied with 45, this is uniformly distributed load. 44 multiplied with 45, multiplied with 45 over 2. This is how we consider this loading. No more, equal to zero. Get another equation with AY and BY. So together with this and this, where you get it from the two hinges, you solve them simultaneously. So this is mathematics. So please remember your mathematics. This is a very simple mathematics. This is just solving simultaneous equations. This one plus this one. Together you solve for AY and BY. So this is the case where we cannot solve immediately directly only using one equilibrium equation solve for the reaction forces. It has you have to form two equations and to solve them simultaneously. So if you solve them simultaneously, we get AY negative, which is the direction, the correct direction is not going up, going down. Get BY positive, so the direction is going up, it is correct. Okay. So Next, what you have to do is this one is solved, this one is solved, and to solve this and this, the other two. So you take moment at F, take moment at F. This is using the whole structures. If you take moment at F, then you can solve for EY. 452, 165, this, take this one at F, plus 355, this one at F. Minus 1797, this one at F, this is counterclockwise. Ah, this is clockwise, so become negative. This is counterclockwise moment, counterclockwise moment at F. This one, 44, multiply with total length here. This plus this plus this is 105. Multiply with 105 over 2. Minus EY, this is what you want to find. This is clockwise moment. Multiply with 37.5 this and finally you solve, you get positive answer for EY. So this one you can solve immediately because using this equilibrium equation, this one is solved, this one is solved, take moment here, you can get this. Okay. Finally this one. This one solve, this one solve, this one solve, finally this one. So you can guess. Take this moment equilibrium, uh, this equilibrium equation going up, forces going up must be balanced by forces coming down. So going up as positive, so this is negative, plus this going up, plus this going is going up, plus FY assume going up, minus 355, okay, and then minus 44. Multiply with this plus this plus this, which is 105. You get at y negative, which means Fy is going down. Which means Fy going down. So, this particular example is, is not different from the others. This is statically determinate beam. And the only thing is, I highlight this problem because... In this problem, you have to solve, cannot, uh, like other example, we cannot get one of the forces immediately, but you have to solve simultaneous equations. Okay, you have to form two equations, so you have to know how to form these two equations with the same reaction forces. First, this and this, then only then you can solve for this and this. This is the only difference, and basically, take moment at C, at the hinge here, you should get this equal to zero, meaning that all the reaction forces you calculate are correct. Now, 
what is the meaning of these uh, forces, these reaction forces acting downwards, this acting upwards, this acting downwards, acting upwards. Okay, remember, reaction forces happen because of that point is not allowed to move. That's why you have reaction forces. So, this point A tends to move up or down. This point A here, it tends to move up. That's why you have the reaction forces pulling it down. This point tends to come down. So, under this loading, under this loading, this point is being, tends to go down. But there is a reaction, it is not allowed to go down. So, you need the reaction forces there. This point also the same thing and this point under this loading, this point tends to go up. But it cannot go up because it is prevented from going up. That's why there is a reaction forces acting here. Okay. So immediately when you analyze something, because later on you need to understand the meaning of this. So this point, when you get this answer, immediately you know that this point, if the support is not correct, you don't build the you don't build the support, construct the support correctly. This point tends to move up. This point will, tends to move up. The same thing also at this point. So of course under these loading conditions. Okay, so understand also the meaning of this uh, the answer. Okay, now you learn how to get the answer. But eventually, you have to understand what is the mean. Because I want you to be aware, if you calculate, if you calculate, you get your answer 6, uh, 66,000 kilonewton. Let's say you get answer 66,000 kilonewton. Immediately, you feel something wrong. Your body feels like you're going to get sick. Because 66,000 kilonewton is a very big force. How, how big is the force of 66,000 kilonewton? How many Dr. Chung add together you get 66,000 kilonewton? Okay. So if you get the answer here, 66,000 kilonewton with this kind of loading, so 66,000 kilo, 66, kilonewton is 6,600 6, tons. And 6,600 ton is a very big force. So, a bridge with that kind of reaction forces is impossible. So, when you calculate this, if you get the value is too large or too small, you get this 0 0.45 kilonewton. Or you get here 0 0.45 kilonewton, which is a bird standing here also is more than that. 0 0.45 kilonewton is a very, very small value, or 66,000 kilonewton is an incredibly large value. So you have immediately you have to feel that something wrong with the calculations. Maybe you forget to. This one is 44. You use 0 0.44, or somewhere, some something wrong somewhere. Okay. So you have to. You have to develop that kind of feeling for the numbers. When you calculate number which you feel too large, and you find you get answer which is too small, there is something wrong with your calculations. And also understand the meaning of forces going down and forces going up. Reaction forces, what happened to that point? And you must be able to, to interpret that, give the meaning to that values. Okay? But of course, the emphasis in 253 is we need to know that you are able to get the answer. But when you do design, then you are able to understand the meaning of that answer. Any questions on this particular example? This is the same as any other example. The only thing is you have to solve simultaneous equation. This is still statically determinant B. You know there is a program called how do you make it? 
How do they make it in uh, Discovery Channel? Yes, it is. Um, so they, they actually, I actually, I don't know who follow who. So I, so I also take some kind of uh, hint from there, or maybe they take the, they take the hint from me. So, so I call it. How do you solve it? But they don't have this. I have this. A special production. I don't know who is this. This is K K S L. What is the meaning? I forget. This is not important. The important is this. Now, the next example that I'm going to go through with you is this is one particular aspect that uh, sometimes students have difficulty. This is inclined support. After that, we are going to look at uh, inclined members. So far, we haven't looked at inclined members. Inclined members. So, inclined load. Inclined support. This this one not much of a problem because you can you need to resolve this. Get horizontal component, get vertical component. And this one we have already gone through how to consider this. This one gives you information about inclinations. Inclination of this support. So this is four and two. Of course, you can find the angle here by using tangent. You can find the angle. <coughs> Next, I'm going to ask you. This is a free refresh. So that now, if I want to write two equilibrium equations, has been has been given here. Yeah? Two equilibrium equation in y directions. R a multiplied with two square root five plus b y minus twelve sine sixty equal to zero. Second one, R A one over square root five plus B Y minus twelve sine sixty. Okay, look at these two equilibrium equations in Y direction of forces. Which is the correct one? Which is the correct one? This is the correct one. These are the same. These are all the same. The only thing is this is the different. So how do you consider vertical component of this force? The top one or the bottom one? The top one. Okay. So remember, this the forces is not acting like this. Your forces is acting like this, which is 90 degrees to this. So you must make use of this correctly. So this is vertical component of this is not this divided by this which is you get this but you have to consider this correctly so you are right the top one is the correct answer okay. so remember if you want if the, these forces is acting following this hypotenuse here RA is like this so the vertical component is this divided by this but this RA is perpendicular to this now. So this RA becomes this divided by this, and you get this. So this one also you have gone through in tutorial class. We have gone through in example in class. Now I emphasize to you again. So I hope you get to know clearly how to consider inclined supports in this way. Next one, this one. Now, this is this structure, this is analysis model. A is pin. This is roller. Beautiful tires here. Two roller, uh, two, one roller, not two roller, one vertical roller. Okay? This is a force 20 kilonewton acting at the midpoint here. This is 4 meter, this 2 meter. This 3 meter, this 1.5 meter. So how long is this? What is this distance? The, inc the inclined distance? This is 3, 4, so this become 5. So, you are asked 
to answer these questions. Moment caused by 20 kN at A. This 20 kN at A, moment caused by this at A, is 20 multiplied with 2.5. It is correct or wrong? This is 5. So divided by 2, is this is 2.5. So the moment of this at this is this multiplied with 2.5. This is correct or okay or 100% or zero marks or minus 100. This is obviously this wrong. No, this is not correct because what kind of moment is this? So the correct answer is 20 multiplied with the perpendicular distance. 20 multiplied with the perpendicular distance to A, which is 1.5. And the direction, if direct, the direction caused by this only. Okay, there are other moments. There are other moments caused by other forces. I want to emphasize only on these things. Okay. So this one, I don't expect anyone to get this answer to, to answer it wrongly in this way but I want to point out to you that in, in the example that we are going to look at the most important thing that you have to understand is moment is force multiplied with perpendicular distance moment is force multiplied with perpendicular distance I keep that in mind so that when we look at the example that we are going to in the following example we are going to look at forces on inclined members yeah? and when you have forces on inclined members and depending on the direction of that forces you might have to be careful when you consider the moment but the important thing is moment is Force multiplied with perpendicular distance. It must be perpendicular distance. Now, let's look at this example. This is a very simple cantilever frame. This is fixed here. This is fixed here. Now we want to consider load acting on inclined members. Now, This is an inclined member. This is not horizontal, not vertical. Inclined at 30 degrees from horizontal. And you have a load acting 50 kN, acting perpendicular. The direction is 90 degrees to this member. So the direction is 90 degrees to this member. Okay. So the direction of this load, it can be vertical, it can be horizontal, but this one is acting at 90 degrees to the axis, uh, to this member, 90 degrees here. So, when you want to consider moment, when you want to consider moment caused by moment at point A here, for these structures, then these are the moment equilibrium equations at A. First, you have a fixed support, so you have a reaction moment here. This is MA. Our counterclockwise is positive, so this is counterclockwise, so MA. Next, this one. Pay attention to this. This one is acting 90 degrees. So the moment caused by this if you have to consider this moment, is force multiplied with perpendicular distance to A. So to get perpendicular distance, you have to draw a line passing through this and draw another line parallel to this, passing through A. So you draw a line passing through this force, line of action of this force. To get perpendicular distance, you have to draw a line parallel to this, passing through a, the point that you want to take moment. So the perpendicular distance is distance that you draw one line 
intersecting this and this with 90 degrees. So that is the perpendicular distance. So in this case, because this is 90 degree, so this the distance, the moment caused by this at this is 50 multiplied with this plus this. This plus this. This is 90 degrees. It so happened to be 90 degrees. So the perpendicular distance that we have to use is 50 multiplied with this plus with this. So this gives you the total perpendicular distance. Because this is 30, this is 30, and this line is 90 degrees, so this is also 30. And this is 3, so this one becomes 3 sine 30, you get this distance. So this plus this, which is 3 sine 60, 3 sine 30 plus 6, gives you the perpendicular distance. You multiply with this, this is causing clockwise moment, so it becomes negative. So we solve this, we get MA375. Okay. Perpendicular distance, that is the most important thing. Yeah? Perpendicular distance. This is the basic definition of moment. There is another way of doing this, if, if, which is uh, we can find the moment, we can write the equilibrium equation of moment at point A. How do we consider this? This is another way of doing that, is shown in the next slide. You dissolve this into component. You find the component of this, which is 550, this is 30, so this is 60, and this is 30. So to this component, this is 30, this is 90 degrees, so this should be 30. So find this component, this component is 50 sine 30. And this component is 50 cos 30, which is this one. You can find the component and then after that, you look at this, you consider the moment at point A caused by the component one by one. So this one is 50 sine 30. So the perpendicular distance, when the load is horizontal and vertical, it becomes easier to find the perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance to where? To point A. So this one, I have to multiply with this plus this. This is 30, this is 6, so this is 6 sine 30 plus 3. Next, you consider this. This component, this is 50 cos 30. Direction is vertical, so the perpendicular distance is this, which is 6 cos 30. So still MA minus, because this is clockwise moment now, this is also clockwise moment. So negative, negative, still you get the same answer. You get the same answer. So this one, you make the calculations of the perpendicular distance easier by dissolving it into component. Dissolve it into component X, component Y. When the force is horizontal and vertical, it's easier to find the perpendicular distance. Or, you don't like this, you can straight away, no need to dissolve. But you have to know how to find this perpendicular distance correctly. So either using this way or this way, uh, you get the same answer. You get the same answer. The only thing is, this one you have to dissolve. And after you dissolve, it is easier to find perpendicular distance. But you have to dissolve first. This one, no need to dissolve. Okay. Now, this kind, this problem, I give you example. Just now we look at point load. Uh, point load. 
acting at one point. If it is a distributed load like this, distributed load, how do we consider this? This distributed load W, this distributed load W, okay, the direction is perpendicular, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. This distributed load, the magnitude is, the intensity is W and the direction is 90 degrees to the member, to the axis of this member. How do we consider the moment caused by this at this point here? How do we consider this? How do we consider the moment caused by this uniformly distributed load which is acting at 90 degrees to this member, the moment due to this at point A? This is the next thing that we want you to be aware before we go to a particular example. This is a very interesting Disneyland also wants to ask for this animation. So, so in case you didn't see the first arrow because after this you don't get the chance to see anymore because only today. So, don't, don't feel regret if you don't enjoy these animations. Okay? It takes one year. To How to consider this? First, you have to find this which is equivalent to this load, which is F. The F is this W multiplied with 6. So, one of the ways is and this is what we call the load equivalent to W. So this is W multiplied with 6. Next, you find the component, which is Fx. So this Fx will be F what? F cos 60. This is 30, so this is 30, this is 60. Next, you find Fy. So Fy will be F sine 60. The component, you dissolve this force into the component. We want to find moment, so you have to find, this is accidentally, it came out first, this one. It should be. You have to find the perpendicular distance. You have to find the perpendicular distance. which you are going to use perpendicular distance of this line of action of the force to point A, which we call Y. Next, you find perpendicular distance of line of action of Fy to point A, that we call X. Okay. So, to find moment at A, to find moment at A, so you have to, this one will be moment at A caused by this. Okay? You don't forget this MA, we only concentrate on this only. So it becomes Fx multiplied with Y, which is clockwise, plus Fy multiplied with X, also clockwise. And this summation of moment at A, uh, this one, we should consider this, but we pay attention to this one only. So you have to minus this MA. But I'm going to show you the moment that will be caused by this distributed load. Okay. Or you can also find this one. You have to pass through a line pass through the line of action of this force F and then another line parallel to this passing through point A. Find the perpendicular distance which we call D. Then the moment caused by this at A, by this only, we have to consider this as well. So 
for the moment we, we, we forget about this one first, but you have to consider this. We are going to concentrate on this F multiplied with D. This is clockwise. So they are the same. You, you will get the same answer. Either you are doing this way or the previous way, you get the same answer. So each way has its difficulty, each way has its advantages, but it doesn't matter which way you use. The previous one, which is this or this, directly this. Okay. But the most important thing is this. Moment must be force multiplied with perpendicular distance. Or else, that is not the formal, this is not following the definition of moment. Okay? You should be able to solve this uh, in 90 seconds, okay. if you understand the concept. So, look at these questions, okay. take up a piece of paper and please answer this. This is for you to, to test yourself, your understanding of, of considering moment, which is caused by load which is inclined. This one, the load is inclined, okay. the members they are inclined members, but the load is inclined. So, I want you to draw a first free body diagram for the frame shown in the figure. Free body diagram. This frame, this is a pin support. This is roller support. Okay? Now, sometimes we put tire, but sometimes if there is no tire, we go to the shop at night, the shop is closed. No tire, so you just, you can run without tire. So. We put a small gap here, this meaning that it can move. So it depends on the, sometimes some books, and sometimes different countries, they use different symbol. But this is a roller. Okay? This is a pin. So to draw a free body diagram, I think no problem. Okay, support A and D are pin and roller supports respectively. After you draw this, calculate the vertical reaction at support D. I want to support D only, no need to find AX and AY. Okay. Only find reaction force at D. Draw the free body diagrams, and then from there you use your free body diagram. Then you consider which equilibrium equation that you want to use, and to find the answer. What we want from you, what is required, is vertical reaction at D. A not interested at this moment, only at D. Try to remember how you consider moment caused by inclined load. This is 35 degrees, okay, from for example. Okay. This is a free body diagram. AX, AY, DY. I think this one, everybody should be able to write this. And please indicate the X and Y axis here, so that we know which is the Y, which is the X. And the, the question asks us to find reaction at Y, uh, D only. So these are the reaction required. This is only one. So you take moment at A. You take moment at A. So AX and AY, this, this one we don't need. We want DY only. So use this equilibrium equations. Okay, so I consider counterclockwise. Uh, I consider counterclockwise as positive. And this one, this is clockwise. Okay, counterclockwise as positive. So dy, this is ten, yeah? four and six, 
So this is 10. 10 multiplied with dy, this is the moment caused by dy minus. Now this is inclined force load that I want you to consider. So you dissolve this. 50 sine 35, 50 sine 35, this component. Then you have to multiply with this perpendicular distance which is 10. Next, and this direction is clockwise, so negative. Next one, negative, 50 cos 35. 50 cos 35 is this component. The perpendicular distance is 9. Multiply with 9, this is also clockwise moment, also negative, negative. You solve this, you get 65.54. I hope everyone get this. Eh? Everyone get this? Okay. So be careful how you. So this one you dissolve this. If you don't like this, you can find the perpendicular distance. But this one will be. Uh, this one will be easier for you to find perpendicular distance, and it's not so difficult to dissolve this. So you use using, using this way, then you can find 65.54. So make sure you understand this step here. Okay. Any questions you like to ask before I go to one example of frame where it involves inclined member and the loading that is acting on inclined members? How do you consider this loading? Now, this next example that we're going to go through, this has the characteristics of loading which is acting on inclined members. This is a frame. This is a frame and specifically we give, this is a gable frame. Gable frame is a frame that looks like this and then this one, this has a pitch which is not horizontal but is inclined. This normally we see in factory building, uh, industrial building where we have this, this is a roof part and you have a rigid, rigid joint here, rigid joint and it is at a certain angle, it is inclined. So this is a gable frame and we have loading acting here 3.7 kN per meter and we have loading here 2.4 kN per meter, the height 3.6. This height from here to the top point is 1.8, the vertical height and we have loading acting like this which is the direction is perpendicular to the member. This is acting on the member, this is acting away from the member. The direction, this is pushing, this is acting away. This is pushing, this is acting on the member, this is acting away, the directions. And this distance here, from here is 2.4, 2.4, this is pin, pin, this is hinge. And now we want to see how we solve for reaction forces of this and we make use of what I discussed just now how to consider loading which is acting on inclined members and in this case the loading is uniformly distributed and it is acting perpendicular to the member. This, this kind of loading it we it uh, represent wind load. Uh, represent wind load. This is pressure. This is pressure from wind and this is suction. This is suction load. This is uh, sometimes the roof, sometimes the roof zinc can fly away is because of this suction force which is overcoming the forces holding the zinc down. So this suction force if it is too high and the forces whatever screw or the nails that you use to hold down the zinc, the connection is not strong enough or the zinc, the connection is not strong enough, the zinc will fly away. This is suction. This is also a kind of loading, wind loading acting on a wall and this is taken by this member. This is pressure, this is suction. Okay, when wind flow through. Right, this morning, this early in this morning, the wind is quite 
the strong wind, so when it's passing through a building, it will cause this kind of loading. Pressure, it can be pressure or suction. So, statically determinant, check statical determinacy, there's a hinge there, you divide them into two at this here. So the green one is the forces at the hinge. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six unknown forces. Equilibrium equation three and three, three multiplied with two, you get six. So statically determinant frame. Now we want to look at, we want to solve for the reaction force now. So this is a three body diagram, four. AX, AY, CX, CY. And we have, as I mentioned, you have a load on inclined member. This is an inclined member. This is not horizontal, not vertical. It is at certain angle. And the direction of load, this is uniformly distributed load. And the direction of load is perpendicular, 90 degrees to the member axis. So this is a member axis and the load is 90 degrees and it is uniformly distributed, 0 0.7 kilonewton per meter. This is 1.8, this is 2.4, so we can find what is the angle here, or we can find the sine and cosine necessary. If this is 1.8, this is 2.4, what is this length also you can find. So this is an equilibrium equation, the first one that we use. We want to find AX, AY, CX, CY. So, as far as we can, you try to find one equilibrium equation. And one of it, definitely you have to make use of the hinge condition here. You find one that you can use that and solve either one of these immediately. These and these, they are lying on the same height, at the same level. So, these A and C at the same height level. So the first equilibrium equation that we choose here is to take moment at C for the whole frame, take moment at C, whole frame. So you take moment at C, you don't have to consider Cx, Cy, you don't have to consider Ax, you get Ay directly, you get Ay directly. So these are the equilibrium equations. You let, look at this one by one, how do we get all these things? So this one is the moment caused by Ay, we consider counterclockwise as positive. So Ay is clockwise moment. This is due to Ay. This one is because of this at C. And this and this is because of this and this. This one is because of this. Remember, you want to take moment at C. This one comes from this. This one comes from this. This two, this one, two, three, four, come from this and this. And this one comes from here. And we solve AY, AY, we get a negative, meaning that the correct direction is not upwards, but going down. Okay. In order to understand this, so this is what I've discussed with you just now on the few slides before this. This is a uniformly distributed load, so we find the total load. The total load, which is 0 0.7 multiplied with 3. Where do you get the 3 from? This is 1.8, this is 2.4, so you can, you can use the Pythagoras theorem, you can find this is 3. This length is 3. Okay. Because this is 1.8, this is 2.4 or 3. You can convert, this ratio is 3, 4, 5. Uh, the ratio is 3, 4, 5, but uh, the correct, this is 1.8, 2.4, this become 3. So, the next thing is we find the component of this and component of this. The same thing for this. This one is pressing against the member, so the direction is this. This one is pointing away, so the direction is like this. 3.3 multiplied with 3. 3.3 multiplied with 3. Now, this 3, 4, 5, this, this, this is not always 3, 4, 5, okay? This is a ratio only, 3, 4. The important thing for us here, the important thing for us is we want to make use of this to find the cosine and sine, the angle itself. Okay? This 3, 4 and 5 is the ratio. 
If this is 3, this becomes 4, this becomes 5. If this is 1.8, following the ratio, it becomes 2.4 and 3. So don't confuse this 3, 4 and this. This is not height 3 and 4 here. Okay? The height is 1.8. From here to here is 2.4. As a result, this is 3. That's why we 0 0.7 multiplied with 3. 3.3 multiplied with 3. But to find the angle, to help us to find the angle, we can convert this into a ratio which is easier. This is actually the same as the triangle with ratio 3, 4, 5. And remember, this, this one shows the inclination member in this direction. Our forces is acting like this, acting like this, perpendicular to the member. So we have to make use of this information correctly when we want to find the vertical and horizontal component. For well, the next slide, I'll show you step by step. This one is, <coughs> this one you get the horizontal component of this, which is this. So this one is 0 0.7 multiplied with 3, <coughs> 3 over 5. That's why we get 3 over 5 there or 1.8 over 3. And 3 over 5 gives you the horizontal component which is this. <coughs> Multiply with the perpendicular distance which is this to C. So this height <coughs> plus this height. So this height is the center of this 1.8 divided by 2 plus this height is 3.6. So that is where it comes from. This one is the vertical part, the vertical part, so this is 0 0.7 multiplied with 3, the vertical component 4 over 5, so multiply with this perpendicular distance to C. So this is 2.4, so 2.4 over 2 plus another 2.4 gives you the perpendicular distance that you need to multiply with this vertical component to point C. Okay, so the directions here, the direction, this is counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise, that's why it's positive. But this one is clockwise, so that's why it's negative. Because we consider counterclockwise moment as positive. Okay, this is the first part. The next one is this one. Go to the next one, is this. So this one here, the same process, this is the horizontal part, so you have 3.3 .3 multiplied with 3, then find the horizontal is 3 over 5, then the perpendicular distance to C is this, so again 1.8 over 2 plus 3.6, and this is causing clockwise moment become negative. This one is the vertical part, this is upward. So this one is 3.3 .3 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 4 over 5. Okay. And perpendicular distance, this one we want to take moment at C. You take moment at C, so if you draw a line parallel to this, you find perpendicular distance to C, it will be 2.4 over 2. Because this distance is 2.4. And the perpendicular distance of this to C is 2.4 over 2. And this is causing clockwise moment at C, so get negative. Okay. So this is how these two parts are being considered and where these two equations are from. So you solve this, and this one I think you should be able to get this. This one you should be able to get because this is uh, load which is horizontal. Okay, so the first one, this is this, get the component, get the correct perpendicular distance. When you want to find a component, use this information of inclination correctly. The second one is on this, also find the component of the total load and then find the perpendicular distance correctly, the corresponding perpendicular distance. 
and you can get the moment caused by this and this. So we solve this in this way. Okay. So next, you already got this, you already got this. So next, AY already known, so we want, to know, we want to know the other three. So the other three is you can solve by using this. So make use of the hinge here, the hinge. Make use of the hinge. So this one already solved. So if you take this part only, so if you take moment at B, then you can find AX. You can get AX directly. So this is the equilibrium equation that we want to use next. You use the hinge conditions. Now here I'm showing you the, the moment. The, this 0 0.7 multiplied with 3 is the equivalent load of this. 0 0.7 multiplied with 3, this is an equivalent load. Direction is 90 degrees. So if you want to take moment at B, so we can make use of this multiply directly with 3 over 2. Or you can also use the component. You can also get horizontal vertical component and find the perpendicular distance to B. You can get the same answer. In this case, because this is easy, this will be easier for these questions. 0 0.7 multiplied with 3 acting at the center here, which is equivalent to this load. Then just multiply with this total length is 3, so 3 divided by 2. So, yeah, 0 0.7 multiplied with 3, that is the total force equivalent to this. So this is the equilibrium equation. Yeah. Ax, this comes from Ax, Ax multiplied with 3.6 plus 1.8 plus moment caused by this. Multiply with 2.4. This is counterclockwise. This also counterclockwise. We consider counterclockwise as positive. Plus this. 3.7 multiply with 3.6. Multiply with 3.6 over 2. Plus 1.8. We want to take moment at B. Yeah? So that's why 3.6 over 2. Plus 1.8. This is for this moment. The last one is this, 0 0.7 multiplied with 3, multiplied with 3 over 2, this is also counterclockwise, so become positive. You solve this, you get AX negative, which means the direction that we assume is wrong, it is acting in the opposite direction compared to this, because we get negative. So here we make use of this directly, no need to resolve because this is easier. You can also resolve, find the horizontal component, vertical component, find the perpendicular distance, find the perpendicular distance, pay attention to the direction of the moment, then you can get, you will still get the same answer. But here because of the direction of action is already 90 degrees and this gives us directly the perpendicular distance 3 over 2, so we use this way. So whichever way you want to choose uh, is up to you the, the, and up to the question. Which one is easier? Whether you want to find a component or you want to use straight away and find the perpendicular distance in this way. So you have solved the, for AX also by using the condition of the hint. So the next thing is, this one is solved, this one is solved with the correct direction, you want to solve this and this, Cx and Cy. You want to solve for Cx and Cy, the other two reaction forces. So we have to use two more equilibrium equations. The first one, you take forces in x directions, summation of forces in x directions. So negative 16.443 is this, plus this one comes from here, going this way, that's why positive, plus this one comes from here, 
going this way, that's y positive plus cx. Then this one, yeah. this is this component and this is this component. 0 0.7 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 3 over 5, you find this component. And this one is 3.3 multiplied with 3 and multiply with 3 over 5 to get the horizontal component. Horizontal component. This and this is similar to this that I've shown just now. This one. Okay. This 3.3 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 3 over 5 gives you this component. And this 0 0.7 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 3 over 5 gives you this component. Yeah. This component and this component. We have used that in here. This one and this one. This is this. This one is that. So you solve this, you get Cx negative. You get Cx negative and the correct direction is opposite to what we assume. It is acting from right to left, not from left to right. So we get negative. It means what? Your direction is wrong. Okay, so this one solve, this one solve, this one is solve. The, the last one, you take equilibrium equation in y directions. So assume upward as positive. So this is going down negative. This is going up positive. This one comes from here and this one comes from there. So this is going down, that's why negative. This component is going up, that's why it becomes positive. And this is 0 0.7 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 4 over 5. This one is 3.3 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 4 over 5. So finally, we get CY positive. The direction is upwards. It is correctly assumed. So this is the answer. This is the answer for this problem, which is you have inclined members and the load is acting perpendicular to the inclined members. AX, AY, CX, CY. You can do some checking, take moment at B, take moment at B, this is AB, I think this is B. Take moment at B, I think this is B. Then you can Find a moment, then you should get it approximately equal to zero or zero, so that the answer is correct. So the important point for you to, to take note of is in this example, how do you consider loading like this on inclined member direction is perpendicular. In this case, it's perpendicular. Then, how do you make use of this information given to you? This is 1.8, this is 2.4. So you can find the inclination. What should be this angle or what is the inclination that you should use when you want to find the component? Because this 1.8, this 2.4, this information is needed when you want to find the component. This component here, this component here. This, you need to get use, make use of these information. And after that, how do you consider this in moment equilibrium equations? Get the correct perpendicular distance. Get the correct perpendicular distance. This is an example that I asked you to solve just now. And this is, and I, if I cut here, then and one answer given asks ask you to find dy. And the, there's one answer given, okay, I cut here. I cut here, then I make use of this member, then I find immediately the vertical force is dy is equal to 50 sine 35. Is this correct? What is wrong with this? What is wrong with this diagram? What is wrong with this diagram? What is wrong with this calculation? Not perpendicular distance to where? This one, you cut it here, okay? You cut here, you cut here. 
At the joint here, then you make use of this free body diagram. You draw this free body diagram, make use equilibrium equation forces. This one going up must be equal to coming down. So you find dy is 28. Just now we find dy is 65. This one 28. This one is not correct. What's wrong with these calculations? Moment. Internal moment. Immediately you feel like, what kind of diagram is this? You feel something wrong. What is wrong with this? Yeah, when you cut through a, a, a structures, it definitely there must be internal forces. So when you cut through here, this is cutting through here. When you cut through there, when you get this free body diagram, the place where you cut, you should have this force. How many you have? This one and moment. So, it, so, some of these might be zero. Moment might be zero. Horizontal force might be, horizontal force, which is the actual force, might be zero. The vertical one or the shear force might be zero. But whenever you cut through something, cut through a member in a structure in 2D, on that section, there must be three internal forces. Three. So, this one is wrong, because if you cut through here, you must consider this, this, and this. And this one represents, when you cut through, this one represents the effect of this on this part here. If you cut through, do not consider anything, which means you do not consider that this is part of this, if there is nothing there. Where does this come from? This comes from this part here. So. This is one of the main thing that you have to be aware of in the next uh, topic that we are going to look at is your shear force and bending moment. Shear force and bending moment, you don't see if you don't cut. So you have to cut through a structures in order to make them appear in your free body diagram. So shear force and bending moment, they are internal forces. You cannot in in the analysis model without cutting they do not appear they only appear when you cut so but when you cut remember that when you cut you have three internal forces in the case of beam in the case of beam normally this one is zero axial force is zero so you have only shear force and bending moment that's why in ES152 you have shear force and bending moment in beam. So remember, when you draw free body diagram, if you cut through something, then internal forces will appear. Now before we say sayonara today, we have to, I want to go through this thing just to refresh you. This is, we, you have learned determination of reaction forces. How to get this, this, this and this. Now, in uh, analysis, one of the purpose is to find reaction forces. Once we find reaction forces, we want to find internal forces. So, to find internal forces at the hinge, for example, I want to design the hinge. I need to know the internal forces there. So, I cut through here. I cut through here. This is what I get. And to find internal forces, Bx, By, I make use of this. So Bx obviously is zero. By, this plus this must be equal to this. So I can find By. So to find internal forces, you have to cut. Uh, when you cut, remember, you have three internal forces. And this hinge here, moment is zero because it is a hinge. The same thing here, if you want to find EY for design of this hinge, so you can make use of this. You find EY. So once you know this, then you know this, and once you know this, you know this, and then because they are together. Okay? So now, if you, the same thing, if you want to find at any sections, at any sections, you want to find at any sections here. For example, 
there is a problem. There's, there's a problem here and then there's a beam problem and suddenly here cracks. It cracks here at the distance about 1.5 meter from A. There is a beam and somebody saw there is a crack there. <coughs> there is a crack there, I mean, means the, the forces, the stresses happening there already more than the capacity. So one way you can do is you find what is the internal forces then. So to do that, you can cut through here. So any sections that you like, but you need to know where which is where it is, where it is. This is 1.5 meter from A. So I cut through. So normally in, in the lectures we are going to use this dotted line XX to represent a cut sections. Yeah, a dotted line XX or we use a jagged line to, to represent that you are cutting uh, through a uh, structures. So to find this you must cut. Okay? And remember when you cut you have three internal forces, axial force, shear force and bending moment. So if you cut through here, yeah, these represent the cut sections. Okay? So you have dy, dy, md, md and the horizontal one is not shown here because it is zero. The horizontal one is zero. There should be three. Yeah, there should be three but when you cut through here for this particular problem, there is no horizontal component of the load. So dx is zero and it is not shown here. So we have dy. Remember what we discussed when you cut through here, the same section dy, this must be opposite. Md, this is uh, counterclockwise, this must be clockwise because they are the same sections. So by you look at these, then you have the reaction forces, which is in red color, and the internal forces, which is in green color. Okay. So this one, we have come, we have learned this, how to calculate this. Now we concentrate on looking at finding internal forces. Finding internal forces is the same as uh, analyzing the reaction forces, because you are making use of equilibrium equations only. So to find this moment MD, you can take, take moment at this point. These are all known, you can find MD. And to find DY, you take forces in vertical directions. These are known, so this is given, so you can find DY. And the most important thing is, you can make use of this or you can make use of this. If you cut through here, you are going to get two parts. One on your left hand side one on your right hand side. So, because they are the same, so once you know this, you know this, once you know this, you know this. So you can make use of this or this, whichever you like, and we choose the one which is easier, where the forces, yeah, where the load involved is less. So which one is easier to use? This one or this one? The right one. Okay. This one is easier because this one you have to consider this, 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 this. If you forget this and then make, make a mistake, then you, is the calculation, the result will be wrong. So we choose either one. You can choose either one. But when we choose either one, the important thing is that the direction must be indicated correctly. So if this is dy, you use like this, this must be dy opposite. If this, on this side, the moment here, the bending moment is counterclockwise, this must be counterclockwise. This is clockwise, this must be, this is counterclockwise, this must be clockwise. Then only then you can use either one, or else you get the sign mixed up. Okay. <coughs> and what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? on this and what is the meaning of this on this? Uh, this is the next slide, this one, this is the answer, 2.55. This is this one which is acting on this, represent the action by this part on this. This one comes from this part, here. the action of this on this and this one is the action of this on this. So dy and md 
on this part now is the action of this part on this part here. So by considering the internal forces in the free body diagram, you consider the action of the other parts on the part that you want to consider. Okay, so that is the meaning of this. Action of this part on this part. For this is action of this part on this part. Okay. And dy is called the shear and md is called bending moment. And this is very important when you go to design in year 3. And <coughs> you have learned this. Okay. I finish off with this simple example on uh, you have gone through this, how do you ac actually analyze this? A very simple example, simply supported beam with a point load in the center. 6 meter, 4 meter. We find the reaction forces AX, you must show that AX is 0. AY is, for this particular example, for this particular example, we can take moment at B, you can find AY. Then you take forces in Y equal to 0, you can find BY. Okay. But for a simply supported beam like this, simply supported with point load, there is a very fast way is this one is equal to this divided by this multiplied with this. And this one is this, uh, this one is this over this multiplied with that. Okay. This is a method of proportions. But this one comes from taking moment at B, you can find AY. Or taking moment at A, you can find BY then you can confirm this. But for simply supported beam with point load, then you can find easily this one is this divided by this multiplied with this and for this is this divided by this multiplied with 50. And to find here the shear force bending moment you cut here. So when you cut here, you have two parts. When you cut here, you have two parts. You can calculate using this part. You can calculate using this part. So these are the calculations. This is statically determinate. Take this equilibrium equation, you get Q0. Take this equilibrium equation, you get S negative, which means the direction is opposite. Take this equilibrium equation at the cut section, you get M positive. You do the other part then you get the same answer. But it is important that to get the same answer with the same negative or positive sign, this and this direction must be assigned correctly. If this is going like this, this must be going like this, it's going down, this must be going up. If this is counterclockwise, this must be clockwise. So you can use either one. Cut it, separate into two parts and make use of equilibrium equation. So, this is the what happens when you cut through a section, you have axial force Q, shear force S, bending moment M. On the other side also, you have the same pair of forces, opposite direction, this like this, this one like this, this going down, this going up, this counterclockwise, this one clockwise. This is axial force, this is shear force, this is bending moment. Okay. So in the next lectures we are going to meet, we are going to look further on actually how do we actually get the shear force bending moment and the most important thing is a diagram. Shear force diagram, bending moment diagram for different kind of problems. Okay.